Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be exploring one of the most mysterious and I guess one of the most bizarre objects recently observed by the James Webb Space Telescope right here in the Milky Way galaxy. An object that's sort of like a planet but that most likely used to be a star and over thousands and millions of years was physically stripped by its partner to become something entirely different. And so here imagine a planet about the size of Jupiter but with composition and atmosphere that's entirely different from anything we've ever seen. And in this particular case, based on the discoveries from the James Webb, it seems to be even more bizarre than scientists anticipated. And so let's discuss these new observations and these new discoveries from this very strange type of a planet known as the Black Widow Pulsar Planet that's sort of surprising and sort of difficult to explain. But in order to understand why this object is so bizarre, let's I guess talk about how we think these are formed and what researchers previously assumed they might resemble. And so in a nutshell it's what we would call a pulsar planet. A planetary object orbiting some kind of a pulsar or a neutron star and the type of an object that, although kind of rare, is actually pretty well known to us because the first exoplanets ever confirmed were physically orbiting a pulsar and were discovered back in 1992. And all of this very likely starts with a massive star that runs out of fuel and eventually explodes in a brilliant supernova. Then what's left behind is often a very tiny super dense core a core we refer to as a neutron star. And it just so happens that if this neutron star spins fast enough, it starts to produce radio emissions, kind of like a cosmic lighthouse. This is what we usually refer to as a pulsar. And what makes pulsars incredible for science is that they tend to produce incredibly accurate pulsations. They're basically some of the most precise clocks in the universe. And it was because of the deviations in these pulsations that three planets were discovered around a distant pulsar that currently has a proper name of Lich. And this was a huge deal because it proved that planets do exist outside of the solar system and in this case can be detected by measuring these pulsations extremely accurately. And in the last few years, more such objects have been discovered and we'll discuss some of them in the description below. But because pulsars are so small, actually seeing these planets would be extremely difficult. There will be practically no spectroscopy here and it would be very difficult to observe any kind of emissions. But even though these are technically exotic and rare objects, researchers still want to understand exactly what they are and more importantly how they form or how they survive the supernova event. As a matter of fact, some of them are even thought to be diamond planets or essentially the remnants of partner stars that were almost completely destroyed but somehow survived the supernova, leaving behind a carbon enriched core. But because a lot of their mass was stripped away, they essentially became planetary objects that used to be stars. But the object we're discussing today is slightly different, in a sense that it kind of started different because it seemed to have a partner that was much much closer. And so this object, referred to as PSR J2322-2650, was officially discovered back in 2017 in a study you see right here. But this was not just a pulsar, this was part of a much different special system referred to as a black widow. A type of an object that's best described in this picture right here. In essence, it's a pulsar with a very close partner in an extremely tight orbit. And it's called a black widow, named after the famous spider for a very similar reason. In these systems, the millisecond pulsar that orbits extremely close to the star first steals the mass from the star, accelerating its own spin, and then starts to use its emission to continuously strip the object, slowly destroying it in the process. And so basically it's eating its own partner and destroying it just like the Black Widow spider. And so as this pulsar blasts the companion with intense high energy radiation, usually involving gamma rays and very powerful X-rays, it slowly evaporates the companion star, making it smaller and smaller and smaller and essentially turning it into a planet that even then starts losing its mass continuously. And this process is expected to strip away most of the companion's outer layers, most likely leaving behind some kind of a smaller, very often helium dominated object. Or at least that's what the scientists expect based on what we know about stars. And while today we know of 50 such objects, with most of them containing relatively massive and relatively dense partners, with extremely hot day sides. And that's because the day side or the side pointing toward the neutron star is constantly illuminated and reaches temperatures in thousands of Kelvin. But something was a little bit different about this pulsar. 
he was also discovered to have a partner, or I guess you can call it a planet. But strangely enough here, the pulsar companion had a mass and density, and even temperature, somewhat similar to a typical hot Jupiter. A type of an exoplanet we've discovered in a lot of different star systems, that's usually almost the same as Jupiter, but just much hotter, which often results in the expanded atmosphere, or in a planet losing a lot of mass. And so here too, the planet seems to have very similar density of about 1.8 gram per centimeter cube, and a temperature of about 1900 Kelvin, which is lower than other similar objects, and similar to a typical hot Jupiter. And so because of this uniqueness, this became a really intriguing target to observe with the James Webb Space Telescope. And so what exactly did JWST discover here? Now as always, you can find the results and the study in the description below. But in essence, after observing this planet, while it orbited around the pulsar for 7.8 hours, it discovered something nobody expected. The atmosphere of this object seemed to be extremely enriched in carbon, specifically C3 and C2 molecules. Here we're talking about molecular carbon, which on Earth usually produces one of these combinations with hydrogen, such as for example propane. But in this case they did not discover a lot of hydrogen, suggesting that most of this carbon was actually molecular. So things like tricarbon and bicarbon, which we often do find in outer space, but that has never really been seen on a planet. But more importantly, these C3 and C2 molecules, which mostly have been seen around tails of comets, or are even produced in flames and plasma right here on planet Earth, have never been seen in such a high abundance on any moon or any planetary atmosphere. And to really highlight how strange this is, researchers calculated the carbon to oxygen and carbon to nitrogen ratio in the atmosphere of this planet and compared this to planet Earth. And so in this bizarre case, the ratio of carbon to oxygen was approximately 100, which means that for every atom of oxygen, we would have 100 atoms of carbon. So obviously this could not be something like carbon dioxide that contains two oxygens and one carbon. Likewise, the ratio of carbon to nitrogen was exceeding 10,000 atoms, suggesting that this could not be molecules of, for example, cyanide or any similar molecules we might expect from some kind of a gas giant. And so the carbon-oxygen ratio was approximately 10,000 times higher than on Earth, with the carbon-nitrogen ratio being approximately 400 times higher, implying that this unusual planet was overwhelmingly carbon-rich, or at least its upper layers and its atmosphere. And though some signs of carbon-hydrogen bonds were seen, overall the hydrogen was present in very small amounts. They also discovered that when it came to surface temperature, the night side of the planet appeared somewhat featureless, possibly suggesting a very thick layer of dust or clouds, and possibly suggesting a huge cloud cover, maybe the result of this carbon haze, kind of similar to what Venus contains as well. In contrast, the day side basically just showed a lot of carbon molecule absorption spectra. And beyond the carbon chemistry, James Webb also provided insights about the planetary dynamics, including extremely strong westward winds, which were quite certainly the result of this planet being tidally locked. In essence, it's always facing the same side toward the pulsar, which forces very strong wind circulations going from the hot side to the cold side. And here researchers are pretty certain about this because the hottest part of the planet is not directly facing pulsar, which technically it should. Instead, it seems to be shifted by about 12 degrees, and in this case shifted to the west. And that's because of the very strong winds shifting the atmosphere just a little bit. But because in this case it's going westwards, this provides us with the first observational evidence for some kind of a new type of atmospheric circulation regime. And that's because previously it was predicted to go the other way, eastwards. As a matter of fact, the theory behind this predicts very fast rotation periods, but going in the opposite direction. And so here we have this new observation that seems to suggest winds on these planets potentially are produced in slightly different ways. But here it's also important to note that even though the planet's atmosphere is carbon rich, the planet itself is most likely made out of helium. In other words, the interior structure is very likely dominated by helium, because if this was some kind of a carbon world, or I guess a diamond planet, given its mass it would be much much smaller in size, and would be much more dense. But because of its density of 1.8 gram per centimeter cube, and because it's visible to the James Webb, meaning that its size is pretty large, this carbon enrichment seems to be just the surface feature, or possibly an atmospheric phenomenon, with the internal structure still being potentially similar to various gas giants. And so here these findings basically help us understand these black widow systems just a little bit better. Specifically, they might help us understand how the companions form, 
because according to previous predictions and previous models, the pulsar is supposed to strip the outer layers from the companion, leaving behind a core of helium, but also other diverse elements, such as for example oxygen and nitrogen. But by discovering that this object is extremely enriched in carbon and basically lacks everything else, this sort of creates a new puzzle in regards to how this was formed, or basically what kind of a star this used to be before it became a planet. Because once again, this used to be a star a long time ago. And it was through the process of pulsar stripping that this eventually became planetary in size. Here's actually a really cool image from the NASA's Chandra Observatory showing us how these objects look like from a distance. They actually do resemble these really massive comets. But the tail in this case is produced by the emissions from the planetary object. But when it comes to theoretical predictions or potential explanations, right now there is really none. For example, if this partner used to be some kind of a white dwarf, or a result of some kind of a merger between carbon stars, this still doesn't explain these ridiculously high carbon ratios. Because even carbon stars, which are usually enriched in carbon, do not show such extreme ratios of carbon to oxygen and carbon to nitrogen. And that means that for scientists studying these objects, they need new models, new predictions, new theories, and new explanations to try to understand why this atmosphere is so different and how something like this could have formed in this ridiculously extreme environment. But the fact that scientists have also discovered signs of strong winds serves as an important confirmation for wind-based models and for the fundamental understanding of how these extreme atmospheres seem to react when the object is so close to the parent star. But I guess when it comes to broader implications or why this matters, well for one we now have a completely new chemical way to conduct exoplanetary science. Mostly because so far these observations seem to be extremely different from anything we've seen around normal stars. And this obviously pushes the boundaries for our imagination and scientific understanding. While also highlighting how, well, strange and unusual the universe itself seems to be, and how we still have so many different bizarre discoveries to make, all of which require explanations sometimes in the future. And so here this very strange world seems to be somewhat contradictory. Its size, its density, and even its temperature and wind patterns more or less fit our modern models and align with current predictions. Yet its atmosphere, or whatever is happening on its surface, seems to be an entirely different story and currently makes no sense. And it's really these kinds of anomalies that normally drive scientific progress. They force us to rethink our previous assumptions and force us to explore completely new possibilities. And so as we conduct more spectroscopic observations and discover more about these unusual objects, we might find something new in the process. For now though, this is probably just going to remain another puzzle. But until we discover something else about these objects, or until something else is observed around this pulsar, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out additional videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.